always from the heart of the city. And now on demand 24 7 on the CHFI website. This is the soundtrack to accompany life's extras. And I'm Don Jackson with lovers and other strangers around the world on the internet. This hour, some excerpts from Peace in the Heart by Archibald Rutledge, published in 1927 by Doubleday, a division of Bantam Doubleday Dell Publishing. Life's Extras, with lovers and other strangers, from chfi.com. Lovers and other strangers, from iTunes and chfi.com. Paul Anka with Anthea Anka and Do I Love You and Elton John and Someone Saved My Life Tonight. Archibald Rutledge wrote, and I quote, One October night I walked down my seaside village street on a sad mission to visit a friend lying very sick. But there was a full moon and I felt the silver of it quiet my heart. The world lay lustrous. Every scrawny bush and stone was transfigured. A breeze carried marshy odors over the brimming salt tide. I found my friend, too, aware of the beauty of the night. From his window he could see the glamour, the light flooding the tide and running white lances through the trees. As I sat beside him, a mockingbird began to sing in the moonlight. Long afterwards, my friend said to me, I thought that night would be my last. But from the time the bird song came through the window, I knew I would get well. On the table by his bed had been all the necessities for a sick man. He had small comfort from them. Yet the moonlight and the hail fragrances, and the wild song of the birds, these brought solace. He said, I don't talk much about such things, but I felt all that beauty and peace was really the love of God. Unquote. More shortly from Peace in the Heart by Archibald Rutledge, published in 1927 by Doubleday a division of Banton Doubleday Dell Publishing. Lovers and Author Strangers from chfi.com Lovers and Author Strangers from iTunes and chfi.com Sting, If I Ever Lose My Faith in You and Sarah McLaughlin with Blackbird you might remember that I featured a writing about living in a house you mislike and how difficult it might be to change that house. But if it has a window to look out on the beauty that exists in nature, we might be able to change our perspective on the world. This hour excerpts from Peace in the Heart by Archibald Rutledge. Published a very long time ago, in 1927 by Doubleday, a division of Bantam Doubleday Dell Publishing. He writes, and again I quote, I thought about this a great deal, and it seemed to me clear that creation provides necessities. Sunlight, air, water, food, that we need to survive. But moonlight and starlight are distinctly extras. Music, perfumes, colors are extras. Who put them here? And for what purpose? The wind is perhaps a necessity. The song it blows through the pines is a quite different thing. My knowledge of theology is primitive. Still, I am absolutely unshaken in my belief that God ministers to our spirits 
by the beauty that adorns creation. Indeed, thinking this way about life's extras has done more to help my faith than all the sermons I ever heard. I once had a curious experience with a star. I was on the path to my farm at dusk when I was overtaken by a violent storm. The rain came down into howling darkness. The thunder and lightning were appalling. A bolt struck a pine 20 feet from me. The tree crashed down. Alone, I was defenseless in the profound fury of the wind. I squinted through the heavy rain towards what I believed was the west. To my amazement, I saw a rift in the inky blackness, hardly bigger than my hand, and in the very heart of it gleamed the evening star. In faithful stillness and peace, it shone, saying to my heart, this storm is only temporary. The sky is here, and the stars. Amid the chaos about me, here came a celestial message. Shining through the storm, its light reminded me of something past our world. Taking heart, I waded out to the road, headed homeward through the breaking storm, and reached the house in full, calm starlight. Stars always fill me with a sense of God. I cannot help being grateful. The human mind may be inclined to reject this kind of proof of God's love, but the human heart can hardly do so. In things spiritual, the heart is the better guide. Unquote. Lovers and Other Strangers From CHFI.com Lovers and other strangers from iTunes and chfi.com. Nora, Jim, and Israel. More now about Life's Extras from Peace in the Heart by Archibald Rutledge, published in 1927 by Doubleday, a division of Bantam Doubleday Dell Publishing, and condensed for the October 1992 Reader's Digest magazine. He writes, and again I quote, I know a certain old hunter, an obscure man as far as the world is concerned, but a loyal friend. Occasionally he will tell me something intimate about himself, and when he does, it is usually remarkable, as I believe the following story is. It happened last June, my friend told me, Bill and I, see, had trouble between us for years. The last time we met, if friends hadn't separated us, we'd had finished the thing right there. After that night, I figured one of us would get the other. I knew he carried a gun, and I began to do the same. Well, that day in June, one of my friends told me Bill said he was planning to kill me. I made up my mind to meet him a little more than halfway. And late that afternoon, I walked up toward Bill's house, intending to get it over with. A mile from his house, I saw somebody coming down the road. I stepped aside into one of the bay branches and stood still with the bushes all around me, my hand on the gun, and the devil in my heart. I put up my left hand to pull aside a limb, when on it, I saw a white flower, a sweet bay flower. You'll think I was a fool, but I leaned over and smelled it. My mother used to love that flower. And when I was a boy, she made me bring a bush from the swamp and plant it in the yard. She was buried with one of the flowers in her hand. I got to thinking about the kind of man she hoped I might be. 
Then first thing I knew, Bill was opposite me in the road. But something happened. I didn't want to harm him now. I stepped out of the bushes calling to him. Something in the way I came up made him know it was all right. And it was all right. Because we made it right then and there. Now, what do you think of that? And all because of a flower. But it's the truth, just as I'm telling you. Beauty is made to touch the heart. The spirit is renewed. And life is reclaimed. Unquote. Lovers and other strangers. From CHFI.com. Lovers and other strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com. Shay with beauty and the fray and how to save a life. More now about life's extras from Peace in the Heart by Archibald Rutledge, published in 1927 by Doubleday. He writes, and again I quote, One day I walked into the woods to try to escape my grief over the loss of one dearly loved a little way in, I heard a warbler. He was in the crest of a bald cypress, high over a woodland lake. All around me was music, a stream splashing over the roots of pines, the wind in tall grasses. Everywhere I looked, I saw wild, sequestered grace. What did the music and the beauty, those extras, bring me slowly moving from keen sorrow I came to a quiet reconciliation to the conviction that living or dying God will take care of us in those woods I saw both life and death in the green leaves and the brown in the standing trees and the fallen if you are honest when you ask the question, what dies? You must answer, everything the eye sees. In the woods surrounded by those things God provided, I understood that if we are to hold on to anything, and in sorrow we must have something we can cling to, it must be to the unseen. For the strength that is permanent, we have to lean on faith. For immortal hope, we have to trust not the things that we behold, but those invisible things that our hearts know. Unquote. Lovers and other strangers. From CHFI.com. Rod Stewart with Faith of the heart lovers and other strangers from iTunes and chfi.com the conclusion now of life's extras from peace in the heart by Archibald Rutledge published in 1927 by Doubleday a division of Bantam Doubleday Dell Publishing and condensed for the October 92 Reader's Digest magazine. He writes, and again I quote, Whatever my religion may be worth, I feel deeply that life's extras have given it to me. And time shall not take it from me. Nor have I come to this by sunny paths alone. I know well the valley of the shadow of death. I know the veil which sight cannot pierce. But I know also from the great beauty we so freely enjoy that behind the veil is a God of mercy and of tenderest love. 
unquote. Lovers and other strangers from chfi.com. Good night, sweet dreams. I'm Don Jackson.